So Rivet 1.5 is available and it is chock full of new features that are gonna change the way that you build with large language models. At the same time, many people have asked us for a kind of overview of how to get started with Rivet, what the Rivet UI looks like, what are some best practices uh, that I should know going in. Uh, so this video is meant to cover both of those things. Uh, Rivet is an open source visual AI programming environment. So it's super helpful for putting together complex graphs of large language models calling into other large language models uh, and pulling in context and things like that. Uh, before we jump into actually how you get started with it, come and join our Discord community. There's a link on the website up here. Uh, and if you join it, you'll see that there are about 100 people uh, also working with Rivet, helping each other uh, figure out different ways of doing things. Uh, there's even a section where people are sharing the graphs that they're working on uh, to help get feedback uh, and show how to demonstrate how to do different things. So very cool community. Uh, please join if you're interested. But let's go back to actually getting started with Rivet 1.5. So the very first thing you're going to want to do is download the Rivet UI from this website. So just click, click this button and when you open Rivet, you should see something that looks a little like this. This is an empty Rivet project. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with this. Rivet again, it's a visual programming environment. So you can think of it a little bit like an IDE, an integrated development environment like VS Code or something. Uh, and so on the left here, we're going to see our graphs. That's sort of like our files or our project. And the very first thing that we're going to want to do is create a new graph. So I right clicked on the graphs list and I clicked new graph and I'll create one called my first graph. And I hit enter uh, to name it. All right, cool. So we've got a graph. And now the second thing that we've got to do is actually save this project. So you can either click File Save Project or Command S, and we're going to name it My First Project. Rivet Project. And on the back end, a Rivet project is just a YAML file. So if you're using Git for version control or something, highly recommend using Git to version your Rivet project file as well. The diffs will look really good. Uh, it'll help you keep track of where you've come from. And now before we actually start putting together nodes and things, uh, let's go to the Rivet settings section and just make sure that under OpenAI, your OpenAI API key is correctly configured. Uh, now, of course, if you want to use a different model, we have various different plugins available in Rivet. Uh, so if you want to use Anthropic Claude or uh, an open source model from Hugging Face, uh, you can do that using the plugin section. And again, a plug for the Discord community. There are a lot of people who have tried using uh, things besides OpenAI for Rivet, and uh, the Discord community is going to help point you in the right direction there. So again, Rivet is kind of like a IDE, and we've kind of got our files on the left here. We call them graphs. And then on the right here is our canvas. That's kind of like your editor for code. Uh, and so to navigate the canvas, the first thing we're going to want to do is right click somewhere in the empty space and you'll see that we have this little context menu here where we can look at various different types of nodes that are available. And if we hover over them, we can see actually some explanations for how these different nodes work. For now, let's start with one of the most common types of nodes, uh, which are text nodes. Uh, and those are kind of like prompt templates and chat nodes. And this is kind of once we've got a prompt assembled, we can feed it into a chat node uh, to run, say, GPT 3.5. Um, and so the first thing we'll want to do is click on this little configuration gear, and we'll be able to edit the text node. So here we have a template uh, for a prompt. We might want to do something like, write me a two paragraph speech about uh, the future of generative AI. Uh, or we might actually want to template this out, which we can do by just having a handle, kind of like handlebar style templates. So we can say speech length, and then we can say speech topic. Great. And you saw that as I was typing in speech length and speech topic in those kind of handlebars uh, format, uh, this speech length and speech topic input nodes appeared on this text node. 
Uh, and so I can actually create another text node that says something like to paragraph and another text node. And notice I actually just typed in for a shortcut uh, and we'll say the future uh, generative AI. And so we'll just connect to these. And so I just clicked and dragged on the output port here into the input port. And I'll do the same thing here of clicking and dragging this uh, prompt template into GPT 3.5. Cool. Uh, now I'm going to hit save, command S, and I can go ahead and run this little sequence that I've created. And as you can see, if we hover over, we can see write me a two paragraph speech about the future of generative AI. So it's filled in the template. Uh, and then we can go ahead and we can see that we have GPT 3.5's best attempt at a two paragraph uh, speech, which in reality is more like three or four paragraphs, but that's okay. All right. So we've created uh, a couple of nodes. We've created a text node with some kind of templates and passed it into GPT 3.5. Uh, just a few more other things to touch on in the canvas. To navigate around, you may have already seen me clicking and dragging on an empty place in the canvas. So you can just kind of pan around the canvas uh, by clicking and dragging. If you're a keyboard kind of person, the arrow keys also help and work to kind of navigate around. You can also pan in and out of the graph with your mouse wheel, uh, or again, control plus and control minus our keyboard shortcuts for doing that. Uh, you also saw me dragging nodes around to kind of make the graph better. Um, super easy, just drag the node, uh, or drag on the node to move it around. Uh, and then kind of hidden functionality in Nuda 1.5, if you shift, click, and drag, you're gonna get a little box select, which is gonna allow you to select multiple nodes that you can move around. Um, you can even copy and paste uh, those nodes if you want. And I'm just right-clicking on the nodes to get some more uh, options for what I can do. So go ahead and delete that. Okay, finally, let's talk about some best practices for organizing uh, your projects. So we've got this simple graph here, uh, but let's say we want to do something more complex. Rather than just a single prompt that's going to write a speech, let's actually critique, have the AI critique its own speech writing, and then let's have the AI based on the critique that it gave itself, actually try to improve the speech. So how are we gonna do that? Uh, well, the first thing is I'm gonna create a new graph and I'm going to name it star root graph. And this is just a best practice that uh, myself and our team have been using because this graph list is alphabetical. And so the star kind of puts that root graph always at the top uh, of the list. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually decompose that idea of kind of three agents, one writing the speech, one critiquing the speech, one rewriting the speech, and I'm going to turn these into subgraphs. Uh, so I've already got my speech writing uh, graph. Uh, let's rename it uh, speech writer. Uh, and I'm going to take these two text nodes and I'm going to turn them into uh, graph input nodes. Uh, I have to delete them. Uh, so if I just go to add input output and graph input, and I'll add another graph input, and I'm going to call this one speech length, and I'm going to call this one speech topic, and we're going to co connect this over here. And then we're going to create a uh, graph output node. Uh, I'm just actually going to type in output here, graph output node, and we can just leave it as output. Great, so now if I come to my root graph and I add a subgraph node, You can see you know, speech writer, and you can see my speech length, speech topic, uh, and output nodes are all here. Uh, and so I can just go ahead 
as I was before. Add a text node, add a text node. And this one's going to be two paragraph. And this one is going to be the future of shiny wave API. Awesome. And if I just run this, you'll see kind of little spinners when different subgraphs are engaged. Uh, and you'll be able to inspect the uh, outputs. So it's a really great way to kind of decompose your uh, larger project into more understandable chunks. All right, now I'm going to take a brief pause to rapidly create uh, the rest of this uh, graph before we wrap up. All right, so we just added two new subgraphs, a speech critiquer and a speech rewriter. Uh, and as you can see, we've connected the original speech text into the critiquers node. And then we've gone ahead and taken the critiqued speech and the suggested improvements. Uh, and we've got this fantastic rewriter. Uh, so subgraphs are a great way of organizing your thoughts, uh, but sometimes even with subgraphs, uh, it can be a little bit confusing what different sections are doing. Uh, and so for this, I like to use the comment node. Um, and the comment node you can basically just use to wrap sections um, of your graph uh, to explain to yourself or to explain to others how to think about this section. So here we have um, speech writing, and we'll make it a little smaller. So it's markdown format um, here is where speech gets written, critiqued, and then rewritten. Uh, so not the most helpful comment node here, but again, uh, just another tool for kind of organizing uh, your projects and helping other people understand uh, what you were thinking. So thank you for uh, sticking around. Uh, that was Rivet 1.5 and getting started. Uh, once again, highly recommend that you join our Discord community. There's a lot of great resources in here, a lot of great people. Uh, you can, if you're running into some specific problems, uh, there's usually someone online who can help. Uh, or if you just want to brainstorm cool new features that you might want to do, uh, by all means, like give the suggestions, people might pile on. Uh, and eventually, if you decide you want to become a contributor to Rivet, uh, we more than welcome contributions. Uh, so excited for you to get started with Rivet. Thank you very much.